What's going on, Redeemers, Patrons, and Insomnias, especially? I'm Lo. I'm Nick. I'm Curtis. I'm Pete. And I'm Ty. And this is Dream Catcher, a screen from the Dystopia Tree of Life album. Also, a special shout out to Carmen Rodriguez, who. Uh, Carmen! Say Where's the homie? I'm a rap. Kirk gonna have fun with this shit. Snapping, bro. <laughs> they go dump me right there. You know this time to shine. Second verse. Whoa. See, I know you said you like when they feel they footing. I like the just kind of rock shit. Oh no, this is not bad at all. This song said this still this last year. Yes, you got rap, you got rap before. Hey. Swat. Girl special. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a... Look at that video scary, bro. I thought I was under. I don't mind turning it. Okay, Fucking blend of rock and EDM, every and rap, everything. Perfect. Definitely EDM. Seamless. I got like a sandstorm type of you know feel to that. Kurt, you first bat <laughs> for this, bro. All right, um, that's the second video I think we saw with the 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 fire one where the tree of life yes. started and, and then faded album, into yep. like a dark, desolate. So anytime you go from like that spring ish or kind of like birth of life to like the end where everything's like decaying and desolate, like it immediately puts you in that mindset. Of like you know like it gets you in the perfect mood for like the song and everything, mm -hmm. and I love how they had um. I mean, God, there's so much about this. Um, <laughs> there's like so many fairy tale aspects of it that I that I like in particular. Like anything, I mean, obviously it, it's it seems to be more of their brand, at least what I'm exposed to at this point. Mm -hmm. So all their the budget that goes into their their dream like sequences or their nightmare sequences, the lighting, all that kind of stuff. Even um even the wardrobe it seems like they're dressed in more like the the white or like um proverbial like good side yeah but then when it gets into more of the hell or nightmare mm -hmm. sequences they're dressed in like the blacks with the red backdrop. yeah with the yeah. the red lighting and everything the aspect ratio changed too when they mm -hmm. mentioned you know like being in this hell yep yeah and you got the red lighting coming with it 
So aspect ratio changed, and then it went, um, and then it says when, like, I'm opening my eyes or whatever, that's when we get the return to the, the full screen and everything yeah. like that. So I like how they they just did so much throughout this. I mean, I could go on forever, but I love that it's also to be continued because it's a story I just, like, want to see more of. Yeah, all, especially, their, all their albums are literally, like, a, a special yeah, theme for sure. and, and dream and nightmares and everything like that. Kind and of in a like, previous video, you had mentioned about how they all represent, like, a different kind of yep, a each different one kind of state of a nightmare. It's a different phobia or nightmare that they refer yeah. to. Yeah, so it's... A, and it's pretty, like you said, it all it's all relative when it comes out into what they say yeah. in the music, too. Because they, uh, I remember when we did Odd Eye, and then we did Because, and we were, like, some of the, one of your your analysis was like, is this, could this be about love and everything like that? And a lot of comment, commenters were like, uh, well, Dreamcatcher rarely, you know, makes music about love. They only have a few, which we did Jazz Bar last week or whatever like that, mm -hmm. which that's something I do hope they tap I into. I love that. More. That yeah. was dope. Yeah, that I hope. so dope. You're going to love what I got for you tonight after this song. But um, the thing is, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. The fact that they don't really talk about they really talk about like some heavy kind of shit, you know. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but it goes with any type of music that they make. Yeah. From Boca, you know what I'm saying? Boca's a fucking bop, like, go oh, up, you know what I'm saying? We jamming and everything like that. They talk about some serious shit in there. So, you know, it's and then odd I don't even get me started. that's why I said I I think that's the perfect culmination of their sound. It's just literally everything in there, and it don't sound too much of one thing. It just sounds like perfect. That's probably the most perfectly produced song I've heard from them, and I want to say that's the top five like K-pop songs for me. It might be top three, really, but you know, uh, I'll save my spiel because y'all already know how I feel about uh, the girls anyway. So I just Kurt Ty. I got a few more things. Well, oh, I guys. thought you was on my phone. Well, nah, yeah, I'll let, I'll let you guys go. Um, it's definitely. Like, I agree with everything Kurt says. Definitely a level of duality all throughout the video with going from the red back to the white, the fairy tale aspects of it. Um, but like we were saying, even with the other video that we watched from them, it was the same thing. But there's obviously a story being told here. Like Kurt said, want to see more so you can kind of get a grasp of what the story is that they're trying to tell. Um, but visually... The video was was dope. It definitely looks like something that you could kind of see. And, and I don't know how vivid you guys' dreams are when you have dreams, but this is definitely some dream type of, I don't know, set pieces that you would see in like one of those random dreams. But there's a meaning to it. Just still trying to grasp what the meaning could be. Yeah, For me, I feel like, lot. you know, it, it's – I liked – you know, uh, musically, visually, I thought it was great. Um, like Ty was saying, for me, it's more about the story. And I'm I'm starting to notice that that's a common theme with, with K-pop. And I'm assuming that that's part of the culture there. And uh, I, I, that's what I like. I'm really starting to like about K-pop is how much the culture influences the music. Because right. the music has a whole different feel and sound like if you didn't see no visuals and anything and you just heard it for what it was like oh yeah another pop song or another this song but then when you have the visual i feel like that's what make makes k-pop different from a lot of genres how you know they incorporate the the culture and for me i would like to you know dissect this more to understand more exactly what's going on i guess because of that culture barrier i don't know but i want to know more so it definitely more and more is giving me intrigue. So, I mean, I like the piece. I just wish I knew more of what's going on in the story. And you know what I mean? Yeah, we're getting at a point where particular artists, like like I said, Lowe is real vivid. He's, he's really dove deep into, like, knowing this group kind of like the back of his hand. So he's kind of like the go-to person for a lot of the stuff that's Dreamcatcher, like, you know, mm -hmm. S. Um, we are getting at a comfortable point with a lot of groups where we kind of know what the tone is of the group, what they're mm -hmm. hitting for, and kind of what's the underlying themes to some of like the tracks and everything like that. But I'll definitely double down on what you said. Like it's, I think Lo mentioned it in another video. He was talking about how like I've listened to all types of music and like from all different places in the world. Something about the K-pop genre in general is just kind of like. It just kind of sucks you into that world almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's hard to explain. It's, it's almost like you, you was wording it perfectly. Just the whole, 
it, it's a culture just behind like the MVs. Um, you know, I've I love American music, and you know what I mean. We've done some crazy stuff, and we've had some crazy music videos. But sometimes, just even little groups—not uh, to call them a little group, but just even smaller bass groups that we watched and stuff—have had videos where you'll be like, "Damn, I think this might be like a top fifty video that I've ever seen in my life." Which is kind of hard for mm. you know, at least for myself. They've been of course just diving so into music many, for right? decades. Like, the thing is, like, how do you compare this to? videos that we like because the duality or you know eclectic the i'm eclectic so not to my own horn here but just saying my favorite videos do you know my like three favorite videos of all time are probably one of them might be a prince video or so no my three favorite videos of all time is big pimping oh yeah well i know why okay never mind this one and fucking crossroads Cross, and, and, and then uh, wow. California it's Love. It's crazy because I thought I thought Chichu was mm. gonna be mixing. I was about to say I know nah. Hype Williams videos. And, in there. and oh, and then Lloyd <laughs> girls all, all around the world with American music. Most of the time, I really just like simple videos. Show me women, kind of make it smooth, make it some player shit. And I, I'm kind of I'm kind of sold. Obviously, add a little quirks in there here and there. Because usually, if I'm already sold on the song, whatever the video is, I'm a like, oh, number five is Hypnotize Biggie. And that now that that's different. Tip drill is one tough one. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. Let me let me kick Lloyd out of there. You know, you know. <laughs> Tim Drill is definitely in there, but no, uh, Hypnotize is probably the only one out of those video and Crossroads too. Crossroads is kind of in this realm actually, mm-hmm. right. where when they saw that, when people saw that video, they was like, "Yo, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. Like, that this is something different." Wild, That's part of remember videos used to be promotion for the song. Right. That's really what music videos were, just promotion for songs or whatever like that or for people to go for movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's literally what it led to. It was just like, all right, it's just promotion to do it. Then it became, might change the game, and you know, it just became something totally it's a different. Another art form in itself. Yeah, it became a, a complete art form. Mike started turning them Jones into short films, right. almost, and then like, just so full films and the albums. We he did literally had film directors directing his music videos. Bro, so this was he, something I had thought about when I was younger. I was like, yo, what if an artist made their whole album just like? Uh, videos and that was all interconnected and anything. Like, you know, I did not get that until Beyonce's Lemonade. Mm-hmm. And that album wasn't necessarily the, the one, the album for me, but um, <laughs> the fact that she did that and how she did that and yeah, eventually it. Hope did it with 444. I wish we get another, the thing is, I don't think we're ever going to get concept artists anymore. Mm. I, don't, I don't think so neither. And if do, in, in America, America. Dude, them clearly, we're going to get that. And I think that, that those concept pieces can only be done by particular artists. It can only be done by You literally just said Beyonce and sure. Hove, arguably the top three in the category. They're literally, you can, somebody can literally make a case for <laughs> them the being best number one in, in each, each of category. their category. Yeah, so, like. But yeah, I, I get what you mean because I don't want to just be that person either though, the old head that's just be like, music is dead and this is going on. It's definitely the, the, not the same. It's, say, it's fair to say. Mu- it's music for the it's masses. I think music for the masses it may not be the same but of how music is produced and I think, distributed now. And that's one of the main things I've had to come to grips with and kind of analyze since diving into K-pop. Not that I think K-pop is better or American music is, is it can't be touched or anything like that. It's just what's expected and what's accepted. Mm-hmm. So with, uh, with our industry now, it's so much going on. Anybody can make music now. Mm-hmm. Whereas over there, you really have to go through a lot to make music. In. I was about to say, I think they have more gatekeepers. Idol or not, yes, it's very much mm-hmm. so. Who are you with? Whereas in America, it's just kind of like the same thing. I feel like over there, starting a business is kind of would be kind of hard. Whereas over here, I'm like I could get bread through Cash App, do hustles, any type of thing. It's indicative now. Whereas back then, that's the only thing. As much as people bemoan record labels and everything like that, during the time with the labels, we did get a lot of great fucking music. You did, but you also had like 90% had of the no, artists getting raped. Everybody right, was like getting money. raped and right. fucked over. Some, Every some biopic is somebody living. getting raped for money. Right. <laughs> Bro, rap, when rap popped off, the drug dealers was extorting the rappers once the money came into rap and everything like that. So it's like it's pros and cons with that shit. And obviously not to say we don't get any good music now. But it's so much music. That's the difference. It's not that we don't have any good music. It's so much music and in a lot America. Of the, a lot of the good, the best music ain't even mainstream. Yeah, right. it's low exactly. key. Good. Like my favorite album this year is probably Don Tolliver's album. But that's, he's mainstream, but he's like not 
mainstream. He's like he's kind of like mainstream enough for you to know the name. Yeah, kinda. he's kind of if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. If you fuck with him, you fuck with him. It's that kind of thing. But that's not an album as great as his album is, or as much as I like it. That's not an album that's gonna like. Just stop time right. for anything. Whereas, what's the last album we got that really just stopped time that, like, unanimous? In my opinion, I mean, in, in every single facet, obviously, I would say, like, Confessions. That's a whole year of that album. Everybody. Now, obviously, we've way. had years where albums kind of, like, dominated and did things. But it, it's not the same to that extent where literally you drop quarter one of the year, you got, yeah. You follow that up with with uh, burn. That whole you, album could have been on the radio. A third of it was. <laughs> you literally you start the year with yeah. You come come uh, beginning of the spring with burn. In the spring confessions. Confessions, my boo. Summertime. Uh, what, what what the fuck caught up. Caught up. Then in the fall, my boo. Then I, you got lovers and friends in there too. Yeah, low. You know what I'm saying? Low, so I, like, I think I think what happened low is that like I I look at the music industry and like the film industry. Yeah. Where sometimes you look at an 80s movie and be like, damn, they don't make them like this no more. Right. It ain't so much they don't make them like that no more. The consumer changed. The way That's the production stuff has changed. The the distribution has changed. And the audience has changed. Exactly. We, I don't want to say people were simple during like the 80s no, and stuff like I, that. I, I, was, I agree with you. I already know where you're going. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't want to say people were simple. But when it came to digesting like music, film, and everything else... In the 80s, we weren't as crucial on music or films versus today where everything is kind of like his voice is distorted. Yeah. That, that's no, he, he he threw he threw this up. That's uh, not in the uh, right register. The a- average person can right. dissect the album and tell you five different reasons why they don't like it and mm-hmm. really be valid. And be valid. And just be like, well, no, you know, this pitch is off. This production is kind of, you know, it's too a little too minimalist for my liking. If I'm being real with you, the 80s had lanes, and now everyone is in every lane almost. That's if, what uh, I was going to say. I really want to be real with you. I could use us, for example, the market for black people in music was really, uh, let's say, let's use 20 uh, years ago. That's when shit really started to explode, because you had the underground music with guys like Dead Prez and shit like that that... You know, the average person won't listen to. Nobody's trying to listen to the kind of super deep shit like that all the mm-hmm. time. And even Nas was like teetering the line. But he had mainstream appeal at times. But then you have Jay-Z, Nelly, uh, Fabulous, Ja Rule, um, Eminem, Dr. Dre and Snoop still making their shit. Then mm-hmm. comes in the wave of 50 Cent. You know, just all kinds of... Th- and Kanye West. All of these people coming in, throwing things in, changing the game. And then eventually the Drake, the Wayne and Drake era, the Nikki, then you know Ross, all of like so all of these different lanes open up and different niches open up, and you get different kind of people. So now you can't just look at a black person and say, Oh, you black, so you like that. It's not like that. There are totally different black people, you know, or different niches and in, in people, period. But also with, with black people now, there's it's impossible to ever market us, market to us one type of thing or put us at odds of one type of thing or what it ain't just ebony jet mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying it ain't just vibe the source and double xl mm-hmm. no it's so many different things like i said using us for example we black men who are world excuse me who are well versed in cinema well versed in video games well versed in comic books well versed in music as we show right now we literally sports. talking about fucking k-pop mm-hmm. sports film yeah, we could talk about just almost any mm-hmm. facet of life whereas back then that wasn't acknowledged as a thing that people could do not to and mention science political science, yo we, we really get it in yo fucking astro- I'm, I, I literally <laughs> use astrology as like my life guide you know what i'm saying or whatever like that and not even the bullshit so that's this is that kind of thing. You can't just kind of put people in a hole. <laughs> and we went, we definitely went on a whole tangent, tangent, but it's all relative to the point of just saying this is naturally kind of their thing. Mm-hmm. The base of the music, now that's rooted in black music, mm-hmm. but how they I mean K pop in general, not drink just drink catcher or just like anybody, but the way they do the music, the subject matter of the music, the videos, the performance, everything like that, it's 
I it's all different. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's even a hot take to say. That I feel like K-pop music is rooted in black elements and culture. Oh no, it's not. They, literally, all the the you, 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 you either you shit. either took it from Mike or you took it from whatever rap was probably like. They said the blue uh, ring. Uh, he literally copied Usher. He Usher, saw Usher yeah. and came up with he, his he like Usher shit. and like the vibe. And I don't have a problem with that. Now, I mean, we go in other videos. We gonna talk about because uh, in SK, he's kind of like he's that bull too. I yeah. I'm not trying to compare. You know what no, I mean? No, but yeah, I, he's, I, he's I, a big I dog it, over yeah. there. So it's just so. It's it's, 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 uh, it's it's all relatives, and I don't even think that's controversial because you start to see more uh, like uh, Korean people acknowledging that, which gives me hope for the future in terms of like, because I mean, just being honest, we know the relationship between black and yeah, Asian we said the Asians a couple ain't of videos. necessarily the the warmest, but. Not saying it's not any type of friendliness there, but just generally it ain't the warmest. And it's less racism and more that we just don't encounter each other naturally. So when we do encounter each other... It's, it's hard when the only way I know you is through music or film or something. Kind of with the media that picks... If a black person only knows Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and Mulan... Bruce Lee. Like, what am I? What am I going to think of you? You, you going to be running around like a like an ignorant nigga, which is you like? Oh, if you a, do kung fu or something? If like, a, if a, uh, no, if, I'm a doctor. If, if, if an Asian, if an Asian person only knows a black person as a singer or a, a gangster rapper or an athlete, athlete, LeBron James, Tupac. Oh, don't shoot me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, if those are the images I get of you, if that, if that's all, like, or they know if they own the two, you know what I'm saying? The same, like I said, the images of uh, people only Chinese, uh, excuse me, Asian people only being, you know, strict homogenous or racist or anything like that. What do you think the perception from us is going to be? So I think that the the uh, difference with black people and Asian people is less just overt racism mm -hmm. and just straight up that there's no real natural encounters between us to where. It's kind of warm. America is kind of the only place where that happens, or excuse me, the military where people go over there sometimes and everything like that in in mass. But like I said, so um, we went on a, a yeah. good diatribe. But it was good, Sean. I'm just I've, I really never mind. I'll take my comments later. Yeah. Kurt, did you even go off at all? Yeah, yeah, I, did. I that's it. how long we've been oh, talking. Okay, yeah, my fault. I, I, no, I, we, I didn't know if the size was like Kurt. I, I went off. I could say know? more. Yeah, I'm good. So you got yeah, I'm good. Off already. Cool. We'll end it here. Um, cause my God, I I just wish that, I wish this video was getting more eyes on it because this, that's some shit at the at the end of it, and that's why I really can't wait till we uh like get in a safe place where we feel like we can drop particular content and just oh, have yeah. the masses just have a discussion. Look yeah. at that content with just open discussion. Nah, for sure. Um, but of course, back to the girls. We know y'all you know we love them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I don't. Everything we said here, just know this was based in love. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we only talk like this when we really even fuck with a group because. It's really us having a conversation well, yeah, about and, and literally why from the how music dope ain't they yeah, like yeah. how dope y'all are. Come to find out, like I said, I, I was talking to you earlier, they haven't won any awards. Yep. And I ain't even been in K-pop long, and I'm upset about that shit. Like, yo, who doors I need to bang on? Who yeah. I need to spam? Who I need to... I'm know? not going to lie, yo. I would love to direct one of their videos or Bro, something. Just hearing you, all those concepts come to life and everything uh, they bring to it. I know you go crazy like, over that shit. Like, DP and... I tell you, I want to write and produce music over there. Like, I would love to do that. Especially for, like, someone like them with them vocals. Literally, you got a group with seven, seven vocals, seven visuals... <laughs> Seven dancers. They mm -hmm. could be the main of any of those things in any other uh, mm -hmm. girl group, in my opinion. But yeah, whatever. Let, like I said, let I us know in the comments too, because uh, I was telling Lo y'all that like the same way in America, how like it's hard like to pick a drop date for when you want to do your comeback and do everything else with them. Sometimes shit be bad timing. Like I remember, I really love Everglow too, and I remember when they came out, I was just like, "Well, why ain't they win awards?" And somebody was like, "No, nah, uh, Twice drop, Blackpink drop, all these groups that came back the same time they dropped, so they ain't win awards." Da da da. And then in SK, you know, with BTS just over there, oh, yeah. good luck winning like any award, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you know like another award. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely at a point. Definitely. Like, <laughs> comment, subscribe. Love y'all to death. Hashtag Redeemers. Let us know how y'all feel in the comments. We definitely going to be having more of these conversations. I love it, honestly, when we able to just kind of go on tangents and rap for like 40 minutes. But our time is limited, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> love you bring us up. Listen, man. Road to 4 Millie. Road to a dub. Insomnia, insomnia is dream catcher we love. Scream. Scream.